Hello and thanks for tuning into this presentation on the TCEQ's upcoming multi-sector general permit for stormwater. My name is Ryan Chitwood with NSAFE and I hope you find this information useful. If you have any questions at the end of the presentation, feel free to contact me using the contact information I've included in the slides. Today I would like to give you a brief overview of the pending TCEQ multi-sector general permit for stormwater a breakdown of the industrial facilities that will and will not be eligible for coverage under the permit, what you will need to do to obtain coverage, and what will be required to maintain compliance with the permit once you do obtain coverage. The multi-sector general permit, which will become available on August the 14th of this year, is TXR050000. Coverage under the new permit will be available during a 90-day window after August 14th. Any submittals to TCEQ prior to August 14th will be held by the agency until after August 14th, so there will be no advantage to making an early submission. TCEQ maintains a compliance history for the majority of the regulated community. Facilities that have a compliance history designation of poor will not be able to obtain coverage under the general permit and will be required to apply for an individual permit specific to that facility's operations. The genesis of the TCEQ multi-sector general permit lies in the EPA's National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, requirements found in the 1987 amendments to the Clean Water Act. Compliance requirements were first phased in with larger municipalities being required to obtain coverage, for example, the City of Dallas and City of Fort Worth in 1996, followed by smaller cities, construction sites, and industrial facilities. These regulations were driven by scientific studies that indicated that the majority of pollution was not controlled or regulated by previous efforts such as the Clean Air Act amendments. It bears mentioning that construction activities greater than one acre in size currently have the option of obtaining coverage under the Construction General Permit, TXR 150000. Texas was delegated by EPA to implement the NPDES stormwater regulations and subsequently promulgated the requirements of the TPDES. The current MSGP was published in July of 2011 and became effective in August of 2011. The facilities regulated under the MSGP included any facility with potential to discharge stormwater to the surface water of the state, which had one of the SIC codes published in the MSGP. The current definition of surface water of the state is sufficiently broad to include even intermittent streams and creeks. For a facility to be exempt from the regulation under the MSGP by eliminating potential discharge to surface water, there are some options. These include recycling of stormwater, pumping and hauling of stormwater to an authorized disposal facility, discharging of stormwater to a sewer system, injecting stormwater underground according to the UIC regulations, discharging to an above ground storage tank with no resulting discharge, containing all stormwater within property boundaries, or obtaining an individual permit under TPDES. However, it should be noted that even the potential to discharge is considered a basis for needing permit coverage. Rainfall is expected to make up the vast majority of stormwater discharges under the MSGP, However, certain discharges are specifically allowed. These include discharges from emergency firefighting activities, potable water sources, lawn watering and similar irrigation drainage, water from the routine external washing of buildings, and water from the routine washing of pavement. Also included are certain uncontaminated condensates, water from foundation or footing drains, uncontaminated water to use for dust suppression, springs or other uncontaminated groundwater, or incidental windblown mist from cooling towers. It's important to note that in these allowable non-stormwater discharges included in the MSGP, the permit language repeatedly states that these discharges must be uncontaminated by chlorine, pesticides, oil, etc. Six forms have been released by TCEQ to facilitate compliance with the MSGP. These submissions are also available in the State of Texas Electronic Environmental Reporting System, or STEERS, as well. 
The NOI, or Notice of Intent form, is used by facilities who intend to seek coverage under the MSGP. The NOI submission and fee payment can be performed using STEERS. The site stormwater pollution prevention plan should be updated prior to submission of the NOI. Coverage begins seven days after the NOI is postmarked or after receiving written confirmation from the TCEQ. The No Exposure Certification, or NEC, is for facilities which have no potential stormwater runoff. This form should be carefully considered before submission since even the potential for stormwater runoff requires coverage under the MSGP or an individual permit. A fee is required for submission of the NEC, however, since there is no potential for stormwater runoff, a stormwater pollution prevention plan is not required. Facility owners who sell their operations or move to another operating location should submit the notice of termination to end their coverage under the MSGP. Common changes to operations like operator name changes, contact information changes, or project site name changes can be submitted using the NOC or Notice of Change form. Obtaining coverage under the MSGP will require facilities to undertake certain activities which should be documented on the site and available for review in the event of a TCEQ inspection. These requirements include preparation of a stormwater pollution prevention plan, conducting training, conducting quarterly visual monitoring, hazardous metals sampling and analysis, and benchmark monitoring. The MSGP divides the regulated community into sectors and many of these sectors have specific requirements for those operations. A few common types of non-compliance make up the majority of violations related to the MSGP. These include obsolete stormwater pollution prevention plans, best management practices not fully implemented, failure to conduct training, missed quarterly visual monitoring, and missed sampling and analysis. Coverage under the MSGP will require implementation of best management practices that should be site-specific and effective in achieving compliance with the pollutant limits. TCEQ defines best management practices as techniques, processes, activities, or structures used to reduce pollutant content of stormwater discharge, treatment requirements, operating procedures, and practices to control site runoff, spills, and leaks, sludge or waste disposal, or drainage from raw material storage areas. To comply with the new MSGP, facilities should update their existing stormwater pollution prevention plan, if applicable, to reflect current operations. Prior to submitting a notice of intent for coverage under the MSGP, the best management practices must have been implemented. Alternately, a facility with no potential to discharge stormwater to the surface water of the state should submit a no exposure certification. Submission of these forms will require the submitter to pay a fee, which can also be done in STEERS. NSAFE specializes in helping different members of the regulated community find solutions to compliance challenges presented by requirements like those found in the TCEQ's MSGP. If you have questions about how we can help you achieve compliance with these regulations or any others that your operation is facing, please do not hesitate to contact me.